the Lord's Prayer here talks about trying to do the process with some degree of understanding. The first part, which says our Father which art in heaven, ensures that the believer has a father to son or father daughter relationship and that they are aware that God is willing to hear their prayer and petition. In Matthew 7 7 to 11, it says that if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give good gifts to them that ask him? Then the next is, Hallowed be thy name, which is the understanding of the sacredness and holiness of God's name. So the uh, believer in prayer is not expected to be calling God's different names, but just my Father or Lord, that would be appropriate. Then it says, Thy kingdom come. There are two things to understand here. is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God simply refers to uh, salvation, being born again, and praying the prayer to confess your sins and choose you to commit yourself, your life to God. That's John chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Then in Matthew chapter 13, the kingdom of heaven is explained. It explains it that we have the good seed and we have the tares, and that the good seed, which are the people who are mindful to do the things that God said in obedience and separate themselves from sin, they will be allowed to live side by side with those who have a total disregard for the word of God and the things of God. So at the Christ's second coming, the, the good seed will be separated from the tears. So those who are not careful to do God's word and follow his ways, will be separated from those who are born again, who have received the kingdom of God. And they are the ones who will now reign with Christ in the kingdom of heaven when Christ returns. Then it says that it will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. This basically means that the believer is supposed to constantly be mindful to ask for God's will when they want to take decisions like the home you want to live in, the spouse you want to marry, the car you want to buy, whatever are the things that you want to engage in, you must always find out what is the will of God for your life on that matter and what is the will of God in the life of others. The will of God in the life of others is that they should come to the knowledge and understanding of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for the salvation of their soul. Now, the fifth part is give us this day our daily bread. Basically, one is understanding that provision is by the mercy of God and not by your effort. Romans 9.16 says, not, by, not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but God that showeth mercy. And Psalm 127 says, except the Lord build a house, the labor in vain that build it. You are understanding the mercy of God. In addition to that, however, you are supposed to find a good job or prayerfully start a good business. And then another important part from your, another important contribution from your side is to give to the work of God and to give to those in need. In Luke chapter 10, verse 30 to 37, it was explaining where uh, a Samaritan was able to find somebody who was half dead and then he gave for that person so he was able to understand that that half dead man was the altar of God on that day and he gave what God asked him that is the the money the hospital bill for that for that person so and then observing the Sabbath one day out of every seven days is for, is for you to rest this is a sign of faith and obedience that God is able to provide for you for the whatever work you have done within the six days. Then another important thing is forgive us our debts as we forgive the, our debtors. 
God makes a direct connection here between you forgiving others in appreciation and gratitude that God has forgiven you for your own sin. So we are supposed to forgive the sin of others. Then the other aspect is lead us not into temptation. Temptations will always come, but we are, we are praying not to fail the temptation. This is the prayer here that when the test come, Abraham was tested by God to go and sacrifice Isaac on Mount Moriah. But he was able to understand that God had the power to raise Isaac back. So he, he went in obedience. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11, Satan came to deceive Jesus and to lure him by misinterpreting or misquoting the scripture. We are supposed to pray for the help of the Spirit of God to be able to know how to understand that something is a temptation and that the word of God has been twisted so that we do not fail the test. Then the next one is to deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil simply means that you are asking God to deliver you from danger. I, you will pray for the help of the angels of God to come and deliver you away from danger. We plead the presence of Jesus. The presence of Jesus is the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus. This is for your own protection and the whisper of the Spirit of God. If the Spirit of God tells you something, you are able to stay away from where the danger is. Then the last part, the ninth part of the Lord's Prayer is, For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. You are trusting in God as the King in the kingdom of heaven where you belong and that because his kingly presence is with you you are able to face the day whatever the challenges that come your way so the prayer will go thus my father in heaven i'm grateful to be your child and i'm thankful that you are pleased to hear my prayer and praise two i recognize the sacredness of your name hallowed be thy holy name i call you lord I call you my heavenly Father. Three, is thy kingdom come. Lord, enable me through your spirit to be constantly mindful to fill my spirit with your word and follow your way and show your love to others so that they come to know you and follow you as I wait for the kingdom of heaven that will be after Jesus Christ returns. Four is, Lord, let thy will be done in my life and in the life of others. Let me pause to pray and and carefully find your will in my mind before I take a decision. Let your will be done in my life, in the life of others, so that they too can understand and embrace your love and sacrifice for them. Five, I ask you to provide for me by your divine favor and mercy and through my work or business, as I recognize that you expect me to give to your church and to others and to observe the Sabbath. Six, Lord, help me to always remember your mercies towards me, your forgiveness and your goodness. Forgive me for my sins as I readily forgive others. Lord, let your Holy Spirit bring your word to my remembrance and let me not feel any temptation. Lord, help me to, in situations of test to trust you and to follow you and not to give room for compromise. Lord, send your angel to deliver me from evil. I ask the name and the blood of Jesus upon me and my family to deliver us from evil. Number nine, Lord, I'm thankful and I trust your kingly presence in my life, your power, your glory upon me as I go through the day and through the night. 